We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we are we are it is it is finally season we are here it's race week Bahrain. i mean not only is is it it race week but it is also you will be listening to this on practice day um because practice day is on thursday because this is a saturday race weekend um because time is weird like that um but i'm so happy that we're we're back and i mean we, we've kind of been talking about this at the beginning of the last couple episodes but like season is here it is now i know it's happened it went by, honestly, again, because I was working so many hours, off-season went by so quickly. Like, the winter break, summer break for me, was so fast. I feel like I just, like, blinked and, and we're in another season. So, and it's our first Yeah, which is something I'm that so the, the drivers are are saying that, too. Like, they, they're making a point, which is a totally fair point, that, like, this is the longest Formula One season or the longest calendar in, in history, you know, 24 races. That's a well, lot. Well, pending China. Uh, pending China. Pen, you know, pen, pending pending China. We're, we're, we're <laughs> you know, we're not going to believe China is actually happening until lights out and away we go in China. <laughs> but different from the way we were kind of disbelieving that Vegas was going to happen last season. I know. Um, yeah. But, like, it, it's just, it's really hard for us after everything that's happened the last what five years to actually believe that we're going to be racing in China. Um, I'm very excited. But you know, it'll be really cool to see. As we've said, we're really excited to see what Joe Guanyu's helmet's going to look like. Um, yes. But before we get there, we've got to knock out a few races first. Before, um, we're before in we get to China, we have to start in, in Bahrain. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got to start, start in Bahrain. We've been in Bahrain for a week. There's been testing, um, as you know, has been drilled into you know everyone everywhere. Testing doesn't matter um, oh because God, nobody nobody knows what anybody is doing or run plans or fuel or car or tire or whatever. Um, the biggest, honestly, the biggest news of of testing was that the drain covers broke twice and once it hit a Ferrari because time is a flat circle. I know it's. If there's a drain cover, a Ferrari will find it. That's mm-hmm. what I like to say. But yeah. no, I know testing, like, I, it is what it is, right? Because it's not true. It's not real. The points are made up and nothing matters. Um, yes. But I did get a little bit of hope seeing Daniel Ricardo do well on day one. So I was like, yeah, look at him go. Yeah, I I, um, I would say based sorry. on what we saw that both both V carbs whatever run plan that they were doing that got them to the top of the timing sheets did did look promising I would say you know I because of, of time zones I did not watch a lot of testing because I not sleep during those hours um, <laughs> but I I think that the biggest team of concern for me is actually Williams um, just because th- that was the team that I had heard you know was having the most problems so yeah. I, I'm a little worried about what Williams is going to look like out of the gate they've had their 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 t- slow starts are pretty typical for them but I'm I'm a little worried because I, I, I am too I want to because well. We've talked about how much we like Williams and how we want them to be in that mid-tier. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll have to see. James won't let us down. He won't. Please. I, I, believe, in, yeah, and, I believe in James. <laughs> yeah, and I was watching the the driver's press conference from, from earlier today, and Fernando Alonso made a really great point that we're not really going to know what the, you know, top of the, you know, the the top of the lineups, the bottom of the lineups really is going to look like until maybe about four races in. So once we get to Japan, just because the Bahrain track is not really, you know, entirely indicative. Obviously they spent, you know, hundreds of of kilometers already racing on on this track over testing. So it, it doesn't really give us the most representative look of, you know, each car. We're gonna get a lot more information this weekend, but it'll take it'll take a couple races before we really see, you know, who's where, who we should really be concerned about and, you know, how far away, you know, is everybody from the Red Bulls. I, I was gonna say, I think we know where the Red Bulls and Max will be, but it'll be interesting yeah. to see where everyone else shakes out. So I'm honestly exactly. tired That's of losing. Question. I might just have to flip flop and, you know, become a Red Bull fan this year. We'll see. 
You could. Oh, just saying. I that mean, makes I know you want to just but... like, jump out of my skin, but no, no. We'll you'll you'll have Ferrari. some fun with your Ferrari boys. Oh um, God. I'm gonna have to be a Lewis Hamilton yeah. fan next year. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I've talked about it before. I don't hate him. I'm he's I'm very indifferent. I'm very you know supportive and appreciate what he's done for the sport. I really like you know his stance on things and wanting to make a difference in the sport and not just you know be another athlete. So I think it's right. you know I appreciate his contribution to the sport. He's also a world champion. He is a good driver. He does get a little preachy, but everyone gets a little preachy. So I don't know. Yeah, Maybe I'll I, learn to I love can him. also absolutely appreciate everything that he has done for for you know motorsport and for Formula One, you know specifically, um, and you know all of his you know diversity and inclusion efforts are incredibly impactful, incredibly valuable now more than ever. He's he's been talking a lot about like you know bringing Changing a little bit more diversity Ferrari. to Ferrari. Yeah, um, like, which Ferrari's is... got a long way to go, and we're starting with diversity. And I was like, yeah. there you go. Good job. Uh, it, it, it's it's like, but but it's it's important, and to to have somebody you know spearheading that is you know that's what we want to see in the future of of sport. Obviously, motorsport is a very um, single tonal type of sport in the upper yeah. echelons, um, and yeah. so bringing in my, my more diversity through what Lewis is doing through the F one Academy um, and women yeah. is also incredibly valuable valuable no and I think it speaks volumes too of Ferrari and their vision for the future too of jumping behind Lewis and being supportive and saying like whatever you want to do we're following your lead tell us how to do it let's do it um and I think exactly not saying Mercedes not saying Mercedes wasn't doing it but I think Lewis seeing an opportunity to create change and lasting change beyond his driving years I think was a cool you know opportunity for him as well Absolutely. It, it'll be interesting to see in a year. That said, it is something that we'll be talking about all season long. All year long. I was just going to say that. It's a year away, and that's literally all we're going to talk about is Lewis leaving Mercedes for Ferrari. It's all anyone's talking about in the media. I, ha- I guarantee you every single press conference is going to be like, Lewis, this is your last drive at Bahrain in a Mercedes. How do you feel? It's going to be a really long year of all of that. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, just the fact of life that we're going to have to live with. I'm sure we're all going to get really tired of it. And hopefully, you know, come summer, silly season will be weird enough to, you know, knock that out off the front page for a hot minute. Um, another thing that's going to be moving off the front page pr- most likely um, is Red Bull, the energy drink company that owns Red Bull Racing, um, has released a statement today stating that the investigation into uh, Christian Horner has been dismissed, concluded. Um, they're not going to release anything from the independent investigation um, and not speak anything further of it. Obviously, Christian Horner has continued in his role as team principal um, throughout this process and that that's all we know that has been confirmed. Um, There's been a ton of speculation, a ton of, you know, reminders that we need to work on media literacy. Um, But at this point, all we know is that Christian Horner is going to continue in his role as team principal. Yeah. Honestly, I think Red Bull carried this out very professionally. They handled things in a week. They released a statement and it's done and close. I don't think everyone needs to like get all of the reports because at the end of the day if you take a step back like this is an HR issue it's not like if you know something happens at my company within HR it's being like publicized like that's not how these things work granted it's a different stage but that's not how these things and these matters get handled they released a statement it's over it's done Nothing was wrong. The media blew it way out of proportion, I feel like, um, with all, like, the rumors and everything like that, which is just annoying. And I think sometimes we forget that these people are human and there's consequences to the rumors around the paddock that people just let fly. Um, So, I don't know. 
it makes me kind of sad that this is you know what happened obviously if he was guilty and there was an issue and everything then I'd probably have a different tone but seeing that there was nothing wrong within the investigation um I do you know feel kind of kind of bad for him with everything that happened yeah it's I mean it's it's you know obviously un- un- unfortunate that you know the motivations people have um to you know perpetuate these types of rumors um and you know we I I was listening to a podcast earlier today about it um and it's like you know we've heard a lot of rumors in the paddock but we're not going to speculate on them I'm like no because that's inappropriate then don't say anything like then just drop it yeah honestly I think so I didn't realize how like important media literacy was to me until doing this podcast and like filtering through what we want to talk about and what we're gonna you know let go by the wayside um but it's very important yeah and I think it's it's, well on a lighter note do you want to talk about (laughs) the, the Bahrain Grand Prix (laughs) <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk about Bahrain. This is the twentieth year in Bahrain, um, and it's weird to think that twenty years ago was two thousand and four. No, that see, this is this is what I mean by time. Two thousand mm-hmm. is still ten years ago, and I refuse to think any differently. <laughs> yeah, no, it's twenty four years ago. People born in two thousand are legal to drink at this point. Oh my god, by I many know. Years. Oh my god, no, and I, I know. Hate it. I was, I was talking about something happening in 2001 and my coworker was like, oh, I wouldn't know. I was born in 2003. And I was like, oh my ah. God, I'm so old. He's like, were you alive? And I was like, oh, I was, yeah, I, I was seven. <laughs> Thank you for aging me. I was 11. Oh my God. Horrible. Yeah. Time, time Horrible. is, time is great. Um, time, time, time is, is weird like that. Um, but speaking Happy of life. age, Fernando Alonso got have our obligatory Fernando Alonso's been on the grid forever moment that is Check. here right now. Check. Um, Fernando Alonso is the only F1 driver currently on the grid that drove in the first Bahrain Grand Prix. He finished sixth. He was driving for Renault, um, and he will be driving uh, this race in Bahrain for the 18th time this coming week. Incredible! So many. what a guy! What a guy! So many. I honestly, if anyone's looking for a drinking game on race day, just anytime it's alluded to that Fernando Alonso has been around the track forever, has been driving forever, is old, is the oldest driver to do something, has driven 500 million times around the earth because he's been driving for so long. Anytime yeah. anything like that has been mentioned, take a drink. Um, I'm sure you'll have a great, great Sunday or Saturday um, on Saturday races, but if you pay attention to it, it's mentioned so many times on every single broadcast how old he is, and I love it. Yes, and that is something that we do pay attention to because we pay attention to the weird things here on the, <laughs> the Going Off Track podcast. Um, <sighs> so Fernando clearly takes the win for for most races uh, raced in Bahrain. Lewis Hamilton has the most wins as a driver. He's got five. Um, as a constructor, Ferrari has the most wins with seven. Um, but yeah, going it back into to last year's race where the podcast was not even a dream, um, Max Verstappen, he got pole. Uh, he also won the race. Uh, Sergio Perez was P2 and Fernando Alonso was the shock of the world P3 because no one saw that Aston Martin coming. Um, and yeah. fastest lap, surprisingly, was Joe Guan Yu. Um, and so the podcast wasn't even a dream, but we were still talking about F1 at this point. And I remember oh, yeah. both of us were freaking out that Fernando Alonso ended up on the podium, like out of nowhere. Oh, I, yeah, no, no, none of us saw that coming. Um, and you know, no one expected Aston Martin to go on the type of run that they were going to go on. Um, we all thought that Aston Martin was just going to be dominated by you know, was Lance Stroll A going to be able to race and B be able to finish the race? Because uh, if you remember from Drive to Survive, he broke his uh, his wrist and his toe. Yeah. When I think too, it was kind of like a, is Fernando Alonso still like a competitive driver? Because he's so old and he's been around for so yeah. long. Like, is he going to be able to do anything? Um, but yeah, he- The answer was yes. Yeah, he he could. He did very good. Um, but yeah, this was a, a big race. And I think this 
well, this was obviously pre Sergio Perez's double DNF and his downfall, yeah. but it was like a shock of like, okay, wow, the uh, the Red Bulls are pretty dominant. <laughs> this could be a long season, <laughs> and so. it was, and yeah, it was. no, this. Very this, long. this was around the time that it that it was you know the you know Paris had some some wins and the the question really became you know is you know is Paris actually going to challenge Verstappen and then this year it's like I don't even know if it's going to be brought up even if he does finish you know like P two in the race. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think. But uh, don't speaking of the race and the fact that there has not been a lot of news because we've been covering nothing but news for the last four weeks, should we dive into predictions? I think we should. I'm so excited to yeah. do our predictions this year. So for those of you guys who did not hear our 2024 projection podcast, Catherine and I historically have like kind of shared prior to recording our predictions and like had discussions and you know maybe agreed disagreed um but this year we're not sharing at all so I don't know who she's picked for pole podium or p10 she doesn't know who I've picked I'm very excited this is this is exciting for me I like surprises and we're also keeping score this year so we're not going to get Emily's like out of left field picks anymore which is really (laughs) you know sad and unfortunate Um, I'm going to take it a little bit more seriously because I'm extremely competitive. However, I think it's going to be a good thing. I'm excited. Yeah. Can you tell I don't have a lot to live for right now? (laughs) You're, yeah, there, there's a couple, there's a couple things. Um, but no, so we, we will have, um, points attributed to each pick. Um, one, uh, what is it? One point for poll three points for um, picking up uh, correctly P10 and then five points for correctly predicting the entire podium, including position. So if we get the three drivers on the podium and they're not in the right spot, no, none points. We only get the, the podium if they're 100% right, um, which is going to be, um, I think really challenging for us this year. Um, we are also going to continue doing, I, I think you got it, it twice actually. Maybe I got it twice, but yeah. Yeah, I hit a hot streak um, at, at, at one point. Yeah, um, we will also, of course, be doing biggest surprise and who's going to do a dumb because those are also two of our favorite segments. But we won't be attributing points to those um, no. at this time. Maybe eventually, but those are the one. Those are the fun out of left field ones for for us to do. Exactly. That's that's where we'll be able to still throw good out to some, have our, some our random good, stuff. Fun. Yes. All right, Catherine, how do you want to do this? You want to run through the whole thing or go? Pole podium P10 and switch off. Pole podium. How you want to do pole. it? Yeah, we'll we'll switch off like we usually okay. do. So okay. yeah. Who you got for pole? Who do you think I got? I got I I picked for Stappen. Oh cool, me too. Solid. Okay. Yeah. So this is gonna be a really fun season. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I do the off the wall one. So it's not just like Max, Max, Red Bull, Max, Max. Max, yeah, Max, so Max. hopefully based on, you know, how things go throughout the season, the other non-Red Bull teams give us a little bit more competition so Max just isn't running away with races, you know, 30 seconds to a minute at a time um, so that we have, you know, some – we can throw in some variety with our, our picks. I mean, I definitely will, you know, start throwing out some Ferrari drivers for, for pole position because they are very fast on one lap. It's just – I think Max we got that one lap, man. Weekend. It's all that matters. We got one lap. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Just like Haas. Ugh, just, oh, God. And they don't even have one lap this season, though. So maybe they got to keep not, not right now. Not right now, at least. Maybe later in the season. All right. And who is your podium? So my podium, what did I write here? My podium is Max Verstappen P1. Carlos signs P2 because I feel like he's just going to go off the wall in his Ferrari and outdrive that thing. And then I have Sergio Perez in P3 because it's either he's in P3 or we're going to have Daniel <laughs> Ricardo back in that Red Bull real quick. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So similarly, <laughs> I have <laughs> Max Verstappen in P1. I also have Carlos signs in P2. I think this is his season to just like throw the middle fingers up at Ferrari and absolutely destroy 
Charles Leclerc because yeah. he's leaving and they chose him over over Carlos and I feel like it's just absolutely going to be the best season of his life. So that's my I, I 100% wild prediction. agree. Um anyways, but then P3 I have Lewis Hamilton. Okay. I know. I don't know, but I I have a feeling that it coming out of testing it sounds like the Mercedes car is much better and he likes driving it better than last year and I think he's he's going to do some good things with the car this year. So, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I don't doubt that the the Mercedes car this year is going to be better. My question is just how much better is better right now obviously they're going to develop the car and they'll do really well and you know Mercedes really got close toward the end of last season um but I I I wonder what how much better of a car means for Bahrain yeah I mean I think just hearing Lewis talk positively about the car (laughs) is a shock is a huge improvement it should speak volumes. Yes, <laughs> Rather than also last that. season of like, let's drive this car off a cliff. I never want to see it again. So him just like showing a little bit of positivity, um, I think is a, you know, move in the right direction. <laughs> but yes, we no, can only 100%. hope. We can only hope for, for him and Toto's sake, of course. Yes. Oh, all right. And then P10. So this is my favorite one that we pick. P10 is the last position where you earn points. You get one point for P10. Except for us, we get three if we pick it correctly because it is challenging. <laughs> so, Catherine, who do you have for P10? I picked Logan Sargent. Oh, I love that. I, I love yeah. that so much. I almost picked Logan. But, you know, I think he still needs to – uh get a few races under him before he scores more points this season but that's totally fair this could be this this might be the off the wall of my three picks yeah no 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 totally fair I so kind of similarly I picked Alex Albon so also in the Williams Mm -hmm. but I think like you said Williams is going to start a little slow this uh the beginning of the season I think Logan needs a little a few more races under his belt before he's starting to score points, like I just said. But I think Albon's going to yeah. come out and and get, I think I think Albon's going to qualify well, but then fall back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that sounds pretty much like what Albon Albon does. Um, yeah. But yeah, and not not that this is on any of my picks, but I think that we're going to see some some solid racing out of both V Carb cars this this weekend. Oh yeah, I think you know Team Carbohydrate is going to shock shock us a little bit. I hope they do really I think well. They're... I hope Yuki has a really good season. Like, I love Danny. I want Danny to do well in his first full season back. But I really want Yuki to have a good season. So bad. Yeah. I love Yuki. You can't not like him. The kid just yeah. wants to open a restaurant. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's just here. He's just having a good time. Great yelling on time. the radio. Love him. He's great. Yeah. Oh, God. Um... Okay, I like our picks. I feel like we've got some solid picks. I feel like we might get, you know, get in the points. We'll see. Hopefully. Probably not, but you know, at, we we at least have Max for pole. Like that, we, ha- that's we can only hope. A shoe in. We can only hope. But freaking Charles Leclerc will probably get pole, but yeah. then you know he won't actually win. It's gonna be the first time in history Charles Leclerc like gets pole and wins a race because we don't have him on our podium or winning pole. Oh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Anyways. Um, okay, biggest surprise. What's your biggest surprise of the weekend? This was um, hard so for me. This this we we were we were complaining about this before we, we started recording. This was also really hard for me. So I, I'm not saying that this is a cop out, but my pick for biggest surprise is that every car is a reliable car and um there will be no DNFs. Stop. I literally have good clean race written in my notes. <laughs> so much, no. Catherine. But see, this is what happens. Like we do this to surprise each other. And then we think the and same then we thing. Have this, and then we think the same way. See, this is why I kind of liked it too when you would do it. Cause then I'd be like, oh, that's a good one. But let me think of something else. But now we're just going to, you know, we're mind melding. We're the same person. Yeah. Now, now we're thinking the same things and we apologize in advance. <laughs> Oh, God. We don't need two of ourselves. That's scary. 
No, no one, one of me is, is a disaster enough. <laughs> oh, same. <laughs> um, okay, so I would like a good clean race for the first race, though. I think that would be a nice way to, like, kick off the season. You know, everyone finishing, getting through. We'll see. But yeah, you never know. I mean, I I think that, you know, it would it would be nice to see 20 reliable cars. The cars might not stay reliable. Right. But I, I would like to say, see 20 reliable I cars. I feel like Haas is probably going to have a retirement, but we'll probably they're gonna, they're going to blow my pick that into all the way out of the water. I know. Um It's just okay, probably going well, to happen. With that being said, who is going to do a dumb? Um so shocker, I'm not picking anything to do with Ferrari this week. <laughs> um my I who's going to do a, a dumb? Don't worry. That's very magnanimous of us. Um, my pick cool. is that the Alpine drivers Stop are going it. to no. fight. <laughs> no! God damn it, Catherine. <laughs> <sighs> so my pick is that the Alpine drivers are going to fight each other out of the points. Yeah, that's uh, pretty, much what I, pretty much what I put. <laughs> I said Alpine will prevent itself from scoring, so. Okay. You know, you podcast with each other too much when you're starting to think <laughs> the same way. You're going to wake up tomorrow and become a Ferrari fan. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Oh my God, this is, that, that was, that was. Oh, I well. apologize to anyone who just heard me like scream in their ear. Um, I will adjust the audio for that I. <laughs> I was not considering anyone but myself in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted for the future. Uh, but anyways, okay, well, in typical fashion, we're shitting on Alpine. Maybe that's our new thing that we do. We just shit on Alpine instead of, you know, you picking on Ferrari and me picking on Checo. It's Alpine that's, now. That's, it, it might be Alpine's year. I mean, I... Esteban Akon came out with a new merch line and I wanted to buy one of those Esty Bestie shirts because it was very cute. But it was $50 shipping. And I'm, so I, dumb. I am oh, not Catherine. paying $50 for no, a $40 no, 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 shirt. No, 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 no. Let's, you want to talk about something? That white Ferrari hoodie that I'm obsessed with that mm -hmm. they have, it's like $650. <laughs> I looked into it because I was like, Yikes. you know what? I'm going to get myself some merch for the season because I'm going home next week. I'll, I can order it to my parents. I'll have it for all season. $650. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not paying $50 buy. in shipping <laughs> for a $40 shirt. No, I will, See, I will that's find where we something differ. else. That's where we differ. It's... I will buy the $650 sweatshirt, but you will not pay $50 for shipping. <laughs> well, no, I'll just... All of my money goes into ridiculously priced art books, but that's an entirely different story. Um, the giant art book is about my size and my weight and lives on a special chair and is way too big for my apartment. But anyway. And I spend all of my money on very expensive sweatshirts, so this is right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, so we shall see. But if we do end up ever getting any merch, uh, you'll all probably be the uh, first to know. Yeah. Uh, well, this could be a long season if we keep picking the same things. Well, I'm excited it for could. next week to see if we don't pick the same things. <laughs> we'll have to yeah, see. Yeah, that'll, that'll be a, a surprise in and of itself. Well, going into the season, there are some records that we should take note of, not necessarily yes. the most positive, um, but we saw this and you know us and, well, Catherine being a statistician and me just liking, you know, records and things to note. Um, there's some sad ones and some that I know will not be broken and they'll live forever in the record books, but there are some that I think we will see be broken this year. Like Lando has never um, won a race. So he is on the verge of actually setting a new record for most podiums without a win. Yeah. Um, but I think this one will be broken. 
like or like he I won't do- break it like he will drop off from this list i don't know how to well, explain that i but. so i think that he's going to break the record for podiums without a, without a win and then also get a win this season so he's currently tied for the record but he's i think he's he'll he'll have a podium this year before he has a win this year so he i i think that he will break this record but then also get his first win this year so it'll be like a little mixed blessing type of thing i don't know i think he might first time he's on the podium win this year Ooh, interesting prediction that is a bold prediction um we will we will keep an eye on this and reflect back to the segment when this happens and I will be wrong, and you will be right. But that's okay. A girl can dream. I mean, we'll see. You never Thank know what you. happens. Pierre Gasly won a race in an Alpha Tauri once, so you never that's know a, what's going to happen. Honestly, I completely forgot. One, because it's Pierre Gasly, I forgot. But I also <laughs> forgot like that it happened until it was mentioned in Drive to Survive. I was like, oh my god, he did win in an Alpha Tauri. Um, yeah. God bless him. Yeah. The other sad one is... Um, the Nico Hulkenberg one. <laughs> this one's rough, yeah. Because it will, this he will break this record. Yeah. So if you guys don't know, he's five races away from setting the F1 record for most Grand Prix starts without a win. Um, yeah. Which is, he's currently at 203. Yeah. 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 And, yeah, um, and he's extending his record for most race starts without a podium, um, which is just going to keep going and going and going. Yeah, so, which is crazy, but it's also not crazy. Like, there's 20 drivers. There used to be 22, used to be 24. And so he's raced for a very long time, but he's never made podium. But really, every race, only three drivers make podium. And generally generally there's like a handful who make podium every year he's just never been in that handful of any season so but he's still gotten by because he's still a solid driver he just isn't solid enough to make podium or win yeah I mean he he's always been in like that that solid midfield type of car um right now he is not in a solid midfield type of car but that's um hopefully they'll get their their life together under their new team principal but we'll see um but speaking of of records for for drivers who have been in top tier cars Valtteri Botas is extending as we go into the season his record for most points without winning a championship um with 1797 points he's mm. probably not going to score many points this year in the stake kick sauber whatever the heck they're being called this week the mean um, green machine the 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 <laughs> green car um but yeah this, so what whatever points he manages to wrangle this this record will will continue and i think this record will also be very hard to break in the future yeah no definitely um and then last but not least k mags yeah. Okay, Mags. Um, he's continuing to extend the F1 record for most race starts without leading a lap. So, again, yeah. he's raced for a long time and he's never led an F1 lap. Well, I think that never leading a, a lap is is really, you know, I think that one's really interesting because, like, Mick Schumacher, who did not have a great couple of years at Haas, he led a lap in Formula One. Yuki's led a lap in Formula One. So Kevin, I, I think I think that you have to do that on purpose. Um, I know he's not doing this on purpose, but still it's this this is this is a really kind of quirky one for me. Well, but and okay. Emily time memory. Not good. Um he got pole last year though, didn't he? Or in twenty twenty two. Two years ago. Yeah. Yes. Okay, twenty twenty two, he got pole. So yes. how do you not lead at least one lap when you're on pole? Well, he was in a Haas uh, oh, and was very quickly that. overtaken. Um, and you know, it was you know Brazil I mean. and it was a fluke. <laughs> okay, thank you for detailing out the 10 reasons why. But you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. He had, yeah, one, he one had an thing. opportunity. He, he had an opportunity. He did. Um, but instead, he will continue. And I mean, hopefully he can get pole again on a weird sprint weekend because we know that these sprint weekends are going to be really freaking weird. Yeah. Only time will tell. Yeah. But anyways, those are some of the um, not so fortunate records to keep track of this season. And we'll keep keep tabs on them to see 
especially the Lando one. Um, yeah, that that one will be updated yeah. soon, I'm sure. The others, no, but Lando, yes, hopefully. yes. So, well, Catherine, what are your final thoughts for Bahrain 2024? I mean, I'm honestly just really curious to see how everyone else who is not Max Verstappen looks. Like, you know, there, yeah. there's, you know, obviously the, the Red Bull car itself is very competitive, um, but there's still a question of how far is Max from Checo, but then also what teams are going to start off the season, you know, gunning for Red Bull the closest? Is it going to be McLaren? I which people don't think it's going to be McLaren. Is it going to be Aston Martin again? Is it going to be Mercedes Ferrari? Is it going to be V carb out of nowhere? Um, so I, I'm really curious to see what everyone else looks like um, going through, you know, this race. No, I, I completely agree. And I, I want to like see if Fernando's comment about, well, we know where Max is going to be. And we all, we found out like 19 of us will not be up for a world championship. I want to know if that's how accurate that is or yeah. if it's just testing was testing and some of the cars are much more competitive than the Red Bull. And it it's, I don't know. It sounds like the cars are going to be closer and it's going to be a more competitive year this year. Red Bull obviously will probably pull away and say, so will Max, but I think it's going to be more competitive and we're not going to see Max winning every single race. Yeah, which even as the noted Red Bull fan of this podcast, I'm okay with. You know, I, I want to see a Fernando the token win. Spon- I want to see the token the, uh, spokesperson for Red Bull on the podcast. Exactly. Yeah, I was like, I want to see a Fernando win. I want to see a Lando win. You know, I, you know, Max can definitely run away with the championship, but, you know, maybe we sprinkle in some, some wins from other drivers too. We need the drama. Yeah. A little bit of drama. I would, I would kill for a Fernando win. I don't know how the Aston Martins faring this year. We'll see this weekend. Well, not really this weekend. In like for in Japan, um, but I'm really interested to see if Fernando can get a win this season. Yeah, and then he'll really hold a record it. for the you know oldest person to win an F1 race. Well. F- no, he's it because you have to remember in the grand scheme of Formula One, the guys back in the 50s were all like 50 years old. So Fernando is old in comparison to current driver. Eras. Even, wait, even if he wins, he won't get that record. No, he's he's barely 42. Oldest F1 winner. I think it's it's like 49 or 50 something years old. Oh, 53. 53, see? Told Damn. You. Well, something to aim for there, Fernando. <laughs> Eventually. Right, he, well. he did, he he has been saying the, this week that he's, you know, going to see, you know, what the, the first, you know, I would say first half of the season, he said the first, he'll, he'll take in the first few races, see how he's feeling about, you know, whether he wants to continue or not. Obviously, we're, you know, on the verge of a regulation change in a couple of years. So he might want to, you know, go off and retire. I mean, I don't think he'll want to, but that's well, what he he's left, been saying. Yeah, right. He left and retired and he came back. He's not going anywhere, especially if he's in a good car. And if Daddy Stroll wants to keep him on the payroll and in a seat, like he's not going anywhere. If he's yeah. in a good car, if if, if Aston Martin can deliver him a good car, or the, if he'll, you know, I I honestly think he's the the top choice for the Mercedes seat. Um. So. Oh my God, that brings me to the Lewis comment. Someone asking Lewis if George can lead the team, and just like not being able to answer. Tells us yeah, all we they, need to know about Prince George. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, Lewis, to, to be fair, he did recover and he had a satisfactory answer. But the look on his face when he was first asked that question, that that was definitely a um, – it's going to be really interesting to see who they bring on. I just think that Kimi Antonelli is is a little too young. I know he's, he's you know, a phenom. He's bypassing F3 to come into F2 this year. He's like the second coming of, of Jesus Christ or whatever in, in a Formula One car. Um, but I just – I don't think Mercedes is going to take that gamble. I don't think Toto would take that gamble. Maybe exactly. throw him over to Williams and see how he does, but they're not going to take that gamble at Mercedes. Yeah. So then you open a seat at Williams by Fernando going to Aston Martin and Alex Albon going to Aston. Fernando going to Mercedes, Aston going to Aston Martin. 
I don't, I don't see Alex going to Aston though. I think there's need. There, this is going to be a whole. Honestly, it's going to be like trying to put together a seating chart at a wedding where everyone hates each other and like this person can't go here but if we move this person then this person can go here and then they this is an open seat in here here, here. you know what i mean though that's yeah. it's gonna be musical chairs i'm so excited i can't wait it's gonna be great Yay. yeah uh, okay well final thoughts we're both looking forward to seeing how the race plays out and where the cars actually fall in the field but Catherine, before we leave what is your f1 fun fact for us Getting back to these so, now that we're in our, our live episodes. Yeah, so this this fun fact is also kind of based on this season. You you know, I, I want to try to, you know, give us some like old fun facts, but this one kind of jumped out at me as, as a fun, fun fact is the 2024 grid as it stands now. Um, this is the first time in Formula One history that the grid will start the same way it ended the previous season. So we have Ooh. all the same 20 drivers that that raced in in the that are planning on racing the first race this year, raced in the last race last year in Abu Dhabi. Ah, how fun. Mm-hmm. It made for a very uneventful silly season, but it that was is no it, cool. it very did, but this one is is already making up for it. Well, there we go. There you have it. Catherine's F1 fun fact. You're so welcome. coming up next, we will have our Bob Rain recap coming out on monday again the race is on saturday make sure that you follow us on all socials and we will give you guys updates on how things are going how practices go quality in the race our instagram is going dot off dot track that has been the podcast thanks for going off track with us guys <laughs>